Hello, my name is Claudia DeBleek, and I hope you're ready because it's time to talk nerdy. Do you remember when you or your friend were younger and you had those glow-in-the-dark stars on your ceiling? You could turn off the lights and the stars would glow, and it was magical. Of course, now you know they weren't so much magic as they are science. Those stars were fluorescent, which means they emit radiation due to taking in radiation. Or in other words, they glow in the dark. Now let's get to the real stars of the show, fluorescent minerals. These minerals, like the stars, are fluorescent, which means they give off light of a longer wavelength when they absorb a shorter one. Ultraviolet light is an electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength from 200 nanometers to 400 nanometers. It is shorter than visible light, but still longer than the waves of x-rays. It is present in sunlight, however, there is so little of it, it isn't enough to expose fluorescence. UV light is also produced outside of natural sunlight. Mercury vapor lamps, tanning lamps, and black lights all produce UV light. These man-made sources are how we are able to see fluorescent minerals. This ultraviolet light, though, is only one example. Both x-rays and cathode rays also trigger this reaction. However, ultraviolet light is what is used in museum displays. As you can see here, we have opal and willemite. The opal is fluorescent, as well as the willemite, but when you bring the opal up, it reacts and exposes its fluorescence. However, the willemite shows no fluorescence of any kind. This is a prime example because where the opal reacts with this wavelength, it is not strong enough to activate the fluorescence inside of the willemite. As you can see here, we have a full field guide of different rocks and minerals. However, once we switch over to black light, only two of the minerals show any sort of fluorescence. That would be here, this calcite, and here, wernerite. Wernerite is showing a lightish pink color around its edges, and calcite a very dim blue. This is interesting considering how the Icelandic spar calcite reacts with a bright pink color. Sitting in front of me are a variety of different minerals. However, these two here are the same. This is a perfect example of a mineral that kind of contradicts itself. Though this chunk of opal here is fluorescent, not all minerals, though some have fluorescence, will be found in their fluorescent form. Unlike the other four rocks at the table, this is a man-made agate. Though the chemicals and minerals used to create it do show under the fluorescence, technically making a fluorescent mineral, but not created like the others.